Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the basics of parallelizing applications with OpenMP. So we've seen a number of different ways that we can parallelize parts for programs. So for example, we've seen how we can do this manually by spawning things like std threads and std j threads and manually coordinating our work. Uh, we've also seen how we can use you know, existing parallel libraries. So, you know, we can directly use things from, you know, Intel's thread building blocks, like the parallel for loop, or we can use things like, um, you know, execution policies with our standard library algorithms, which in the case of GCC just uses uh, TBB in the background. Now, another way that we can get parallelism in our programs is through OpenMP. So on the right-hand side of the screen, I have a great tutorial from Lawrence Livermore National Labs on OpenMP uh, that I'll make sure to link below the video. So I've got this up on the screen here. Um, and it says, you know, exactly what OpenMP is, right? So OpenMP is just an API that can be used to explicitly direct multi-threaded shared memory parallelism, right? And the main parts of the API are compiler directives, runtime library routines, and environment variables. So what we're going to be looking at today is the basics on how we can use OpenMP to do something simple, like parallelize a for loop and distribute that work across threads. So let's go ahead and get started at looking at our example here, and we'll start by looking at our baseline. So this will be our serial implementation that we're going to compare a few different parallel implementations against. So our code is overall pretty simple. Right? We start off by creating some random numbers here, and this is all done in the context of Google Benchmark um, for collecting our performance numbers. So what we do is we create some random numbers using this random number generator, so random floats between 0 and 1. We're going to create a total of 2 to, uh, two to the 20 elements that we're going to place into vn here right? using std generate in. Then right, we create an output vector v out, right, which is just going to be initialized to zeros, and then we actually have our timing loop. And the work that we're going to be doing is pretty simple. We just have a lot of elements to process. So in this case, you know, what we're going to be, you know, benchmarking here is we're going to square every single number in Vn and set V out equal to that result. Okay, so that's going to be our baseline implementation. Let's see how we can implement this with OpenMP. So we'll open up OpenMP.cpp. And our setup code is identical, right? Random numbers, so generate in to you know, fill our vector with those numbers. Uh, and then we get to our timing loop here. So all we're doing here to parallelize this loop, right, that's doing all of this work, is by adding this pragma. So this pragma OMP parallel 4. So let's try to understand what exactly is going on here. So the first part here, this pragma OMP, right, this is our compiler directive saying, hey, I want to do something with OpenMP here. Um, and then we have that followed by parallel four. Um, so what exactly do these two things actually mean? Uh, so to understand that, we can look at the actual documentation here. So I have the documentation for OpenMP up on the screen, and I'll make sure to link this specification for you know, OpenMP 5.2. Uh, I'll link this below the video. Uh, and you can see first we have this parallel construct. So that's what this parallel kind of keyword is. So if we go ahead and read a bit about what this does, uh, it says that you know under the semantics, when a thread encounters a parallel construct, a team of threads is created to execute the parallel region. So all this parallel word is saying, hey, you know, we want to spawn some threads to do some work here um, in the following region. Now, along with this parallel keyword, we have this for keyword here. So if we go ahead and look at what this for construct is, we see it very simply says the for construct is a work sharing loop construct. So it tells us a little bit, but not a whole lot, but it gives us a number of references that might be useful here, like this reference for work sharing loop constructs. So we can take a look at this section 11.5 here that I also have open, and we can see that this work sharing loop construct is a work sharing loop construct that specifies the iterations of one or more associated loops will be executed in parallel by threads in the team in the context of their implicit tasks here, and that the iterations of the distrib are distributed across threads that already exist in the team that is executing the parallel region. So if we break down what this you know, single pragma is, this compiler directive, we're saying, hey, I want OpenMP to spawn some threads and use those threads to tackle this for loop here. So we want to divide up the iterations of this loop across our different threads. 
Okay, so that's how we're parallelizing a program with this very simple pragma here. So we can go ahead and quit out of there. Now, the next thing we have is a more modern version of this, or at least a, a version that um, is more in line with C++ rather than using this uh, pragma-based approach. So we're going to do the exact same thing with OpenMP here, but instead of using a compiler directive or this pragma, we're going to use a C++ attribute here. So as of GCC 12, we can rewrite that, you know, pragma OMP parallel four to something like, you know, this attribute open MP sequence directive parallel directive four. So this is the same thing as adding those, um, you know, that pragma here that specified, you know, parallel four. But now we're doing it in a more C++ 11 way. Okay. And the rest of our code in this example is identical to the previous two. The setup code is exactly the same. The work that we're doing is exactly the same. All that's changed is we're now using this um, more C++ way of specifying, you know, you know, our OpenMP directive. Okay, so the last benchmark that we have that we're going to compare against is, of course, TBB, right? So we have a serial benchmark. We have, you know, a couple just using, you know, normal, um, you know, OpenMP stuff. And then we have one um, where we're directly using a parallel library uh, like TBB. So here, right, again, our setup code is the same, but this time we're parallelizing using a TBB parallel for loop. So we're just going to distribute the work right inside of, you know, this blocked range that we create from zero to num elements. So we're distributing the iterations of our for loop here. And, you know, each blocked range, right, that our threads get is just going to, you know, do this same uh, squaring of V in and setting V out equal to that result. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile all of these um, and you know, test their performance. Uh, so the first thing that we can do, um, of course, is compile uh, baseline.cpp. So we'll compile this with O3 uh, optimizations, and then of course linking against libbenchmark and libpthread for Google Benchmark. Okay, so we'll compile that. Then we can compile our OpenMP example. So we're going to use the exact same compilation flags with the exception that we have to turn on OpenMP here. So we'll add this dash F OpenMP to enable OpenMP. So we'll go ahead and compile that. Then we can go ahead and compile um, our, uh, you know, our version of this OpenMP C++ 11, right, where we have this attributes. So here we're going to be using a different compiler. So rather than GCC 11, we're going to be using a GCC 12 here, right, because this um, attribute based approach is, uh, you know, more modern and you know, came out with GCC 12. Um, other than that, exact same compilation flags, F OpenMP, O3, libbenchmark, libpthread. And then the final example here, is going to be uh, compiling um, our TBB example, which again, exact same flags, um, O3, libbenchmark, libpthread, except we also need to link it against libtbb. All right, so that's how we compile our four different examples here. So let's go ahead and see what the performance looks like. So we can start off by getting our baseline perf numbers, and we see that it takes around 231 microseconds to run uh, to do those 200 uh, or two to the 20 elements. So we can go ahead and check that against our OpenMP version. So just our compiler directive. And we see that we got a heck of a lot faster here, right? That automatic parallelization that we got through that compiler directive. We're offloading the work of parallelization to our compiler. Um, you can see that we're now, you know, almost four times faster here. Um, so we're at around 65.5 microseconds. Likewise, we can go ahead and try our attribute version, right? That we compiled with uh, uh, GCC 12 here. So we can compile this uh, to or run this to OpenMP CPP 11. And we see that we get you know pretty close to the same result here. There might be some differences because we're using a more modern compiler. Um, but you can see overall, it's pretty close 65 to 70 microseconds here. And then finally, we can run our, our TBB examples where where we directly uh, parallelize that for loop with a uh, you know, parallel for um, you know, loop from TBB. And we see that it takes around 52 microseconds here. So it was even a little bit better than our OpenMP versions. However, with our OpenMP versions, we just added a single line there, right? Uh, we didn't do anything else. We just said, you know, either pragma OpenMP parallel four, or we added that attribute, right? With our, you know, more modern version. Okay, 
So that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. It's a basics with the introduction to parallel programming with OpenMP, right? Really some of the key parts about, you know, working with OpenMP is that it can help make parallelizing programs much easier, right? We can add, you know, simple pragmas here and there to get parallelization without having to, um, you know, think too much about it, right? So, you know, the barrier of entry is pretty low. However, there is plenty of detail that we can get into with OpenMP. There's lots of knobs for, you know, controlling and tuning performance and uh, things like, you know, we do with TDB, like with grain size, and even ways to, you know, specify certain regions that should be synchronized or serial. Um, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. It's just an introduction to, um, you know, this parallelization with OpenMP. I'll make sure to link this uh, LLNL uh, tutorial and these OpenMP docs uh, below the video. And as always, you can find this and any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.